Today I want to walk through a sketchbook that I've just completed and share lots of tips about everyday sketching. This is a alpha book by Stillman and Byrne. It's large, it's 11 by 14 spiral bound and the alpha paper is actually my favourite uh, paper for everyday sketching. I normally use a smaller size which is the 8 by 10 soft cover. And the reason why I like alpha paper so much is that it's good enough for watercolour, but not too good that it prevents me from taking risks and sketching in the in-between moments. So when I go travelling and I'm doing a lot of serious sketching, I will use better quality paper, paper that is more designed for watercolour. But in the context of everyday life, I like some paper that's, that, that feels casual, that encourages me to sketch a lot. And my goal for my sketching is to capture the moments of everyday life, to notice and celebrate the little things, and it's not to create a masterpiece. So as I flip through these pages, you're going to see um, sketches that work, sketches that don't work so well. It's all part of the process of just getting the hand moving, getting the creative juices pumping, and creating a narrative of my life. Okay, let's just get going. So let's just start. This is my title page. I often put the date that I start and, and complete, which I haven't quite done yet. I have been documenting my palette on the front page of my sketchbooks for the, at least 10 years. So um, it's just one of the things that I do and every sketchbook I try and think of a slightly different way of, of doing it. And it documents uh, what colours I've got in my palette. In fact, it's changed since then. So as I, as I said before, this is a big sketchbook and in fact it's almost twice the size of um, what I'm used to and it's the biggest sketchbook I've ever used and this is the very first spread which immediately gave me a clue to how it was going to be like to um, complete this book and that was I've got plenty of room for collage, for text and also I wasn't intending to do this but straight out of the gate I already um, did a sketch that crossed the spiral. I don't um, have any problems crossing the spiral. It does appear much stronger in photos and on video than in real life. I find my brain just edits out the spiral so it's not a big deal and it's kind of fun to um, extend it over. And of course a teacup sketch. The next page, um, I was doing some experiments with watercolour markers from Faber-Castell. In fact, this particular sketch here was done with them and I was quite pleased with the result. So I was just trying to do some more tests. Uh, a current theme of mine is identifying various eucalypts and gum trees. So you'll see some drawings of leaves and gum nuts and descriptions from some of the books. And I had a blank space, and I thought, oh, Palladia. And instantly, I just thought, wow, this bigger size page is really nice to work, to work on. Uh, next day, I went out and tried to test what I was um, experimenting with. Wasn't so happy with this, and in the end, I realised, oh, the markers, they're fun. They're not the right thing for me at the moment. They're too big and bulky. So after this sketch, I didn't end up doing anything. But this is one of the reasons my sketchbook is all about it. It's, it's an experimental place. It's a place where I try new materials. Sometimes it works and I'm happy with it. Sometimes it doesn't. But um, it's just documenting my life. It's also documenting the fact I've got a new app to, to track my vitamin D levels. And then another big thing in my life at the moment is the fact that I... Uh, most work days go down to uh, Lane Cove National Park and go for a walk and sit and sketch um, the bush. And I'm really loving just being around nature, being in the trees, having the, the turkeys and the, dra the water dragons, the lizards, the birds all come and, um, and, and talk to me and interact with me. And I'm also liking mixing watercolour pencil with paint, with ink. And the alpha paper is fantastic for this. So this was the first time I've done one of these sketches in the bigger size. And once again, it was like, wow, um, this is huge, but I'm really liking it. There's a lot more hand movement um, able to do. The next um, page, so on this day, I went to Parramatta with family, which includes four kids. Uh, and I didn't really have much of a chance to do much sketching. I managed 
these two quick line drawings so if I've got a, a short period of time I normally go for a food a pen which has a more expressive line a thicker line it just um, means it's easier for me to sketch quickly I managed to get a little bit of um, paint done um, and I left it incomplete on the next page at the time these were both only line drawings but this one I did finish on location because the kids went to a play area so that is great when there's a table in the shade that I can <laughs> sketch, a, a sketch a scene from. So it's all about finding those times when okay they're playing on the swings and the climbing house and all the rest, now my time to sketch. In this instance I decided to add colour when I came home. It's mainly the decision process that I make is more to do with the flow of the book as something that's really important to me. So these ones is very colourful. These ones are just left as, as is and the map was drawn back home using Google Maps. One of the things that I do uh, most days is go out and get a coffee in the morning and then go and sit in the sun and do a sketch. This was the um, first of the year, so there's only one cafe open at the time so I just ended up doing a line drawing and once again found myself just so happened to cross the spiral. Another colour chart. Colour charts are a big thing in this book uh, and then I went out to sketch a James Barnett building so James Barnett's a very important Australian architect who I kind of really discovered uh, last year and I call him Jimmy B and I'm trying to work my way around um, Sydney sketching all the Jimmy B buildings. I found it was quite hard to actually get a feel for this size of book like even though the flow is nice it is quite big to have in your lap um, but anyway super fun sketch. Uh, I like doing these partial skies because they um, give me opportunity for weaving in text and what I call open compositions. So a big part of my work is not just the individual sketches but it's the way I design the whole spread, the layout and this is something that I talk about in a lot of detail inside one of my Sketching Now courses which is called Sketchbook Design. More leaves, another teacup, you know, <laughs> and then back at Lane Cove. This is another case where I just, at the time, I had to stand back. I think I wrote, I wrote down here somewhere, um, I can't see what I'm doing, but I was just in the mood to just play with texture. And an idea that I had at the start of the year, but I haven't really had a chance to implement was, I'm wondering whether there's ways that I can record the work that I do on each day in a in a visual way either by a grid or a chart or some kind so it was the first of the year I had a whole lot of stuff to do for my courses. Uh, next page so, so you know every page is not always successful this is one of the pages that like oh I wasn't sure what to do in the end um, just putting some borders around always works wonders this is something I rarely do I rarely paint under writing but I just happened to do that I was experimenting using um, a six color palette which you'll see in a minute my foundations palette I was also experimenting with a lot of layering of different pigments and and colored pencils back at Lane Cove again the turquoise highlights in this is purely the result of an accident. I accidentally put some picked up some turquoise somewhere here, so I just went with it. This sketch over here is a bit twee, but it's a part of a cross stitch kit that I got to um, encourage my niece to do some cross stitch at the moment. So I'm always trying to just record these little trivial moments. My morning coffee, I often sit and look at this boring, ugly building. But you'll see I'm always sketching it in a different way, trying to find uh, new ideas. And in this particular one records the fact that there's a workman in there um, doing some work in here. Back at Lane Cove again, I was talking on the phone with my father at the time, so completely distracted. Once again, trying to get to know their six colour palette and how to mix the greens. And ah, a teapot, more about that. Um, this spread then has got a lot of white space. So one of the things that I um, like to vary is how much what I call positive and negative, how much um, paint versus white space. This just records going to the hairdresser and cutting my hair off. Um, a continuous line drawing from the car beforehand, um, you know, the before and after. 
paint afterwards and then <laughs> just some random bits and pieces. I'm trying to draw more objects. So I don't know, I feel like objects, the little objects in our life spark a whole lot of memories that you forget about. You remember the big events, but it's the little things that you forget. A Zoom call with my friend Esther. Whenever we catch up, we sketch a castle from Scotland. And another coffee, another continuous line drawing, which is kind of preparation for what we were doing in the foundations course. And a new pair of shoes. Very detailed sketch of uh, a new cup my found for my foundations course. Uh, most of these pages have detailed blog posts written about them which explain more of the story behind it. So I will link that in the description below so you can go and uh, find out. This is kind of out of character to spend so long doing a particular pattern. This is very difficult pattern. I really struggle all the time with this one. This one here has, has got some really interesting things happening here and I look forward to having another go at that back at Lane Cove. This is a case where the two pages don't really tie together in terms of colour, unlike this one where the colour is really nice between these two pages. This one's not so much. So sometimes I do try and tie the colours together, which in this case I could pick up some more of this like yellow green in here and maybe some of the blue and that would tie it together. But other times I just like leave it as it is um, the one tying element is really the text that goes along the bottom. Colour chart. Okay, so wow, biggest colour chart I've ever done, uh, which is just so fantastic because you really get to see at these bigger swatches how the two pigments interact, what I call pigment party, which is what I'm mostly um, concerned about when I use watercolour, is getting two pigments that kind of re react against each other and create beautiful effects. And then more colour swatching. So this is really trying to um, learn how to mix the greens that I want just using the six colours and also the greys as well, playing around how can I make a potter's pink without actually having potter's pink in my palette. And then here's a little bit more of um, collage. I'm really into doing blind contour drawings at the moment. So I have two uh, little spiral books. This is Strathmore toned paper that I, um, I have it next to my laptop, next to my computer. So if I'm on a Zoom call, I just pick up a pen and just do a couple of blind contours um, regardless. Another page full of bits and pieces, sketching in the rain. I mean, I was undercover, but the wind was blowing, so this was very wet. Uh, this is a example sketch that I did in order to talk about with my foundations group, which I haven't yet. Uh, but then this is sketching when I'm with my nieces and my nephews, which is a big priority at the moment and another play area. So it's really fun to do these type of sketches and my uh, nieces and nephews come up and criticize, why haven't you done this? And um, they all say, this looks like steps, not a, not a, a slippery slide. So they're kind of telling me that oh, I haven't really um, done the soft edges justice there, but hey, that's kind of fun. With my best friends sitting outside their place, uh, having a coffee, catching up. So I like doing these type of sketches while I'm uh, having a conversation because what happens is the conversation gets encoded into the sketch and my friends are really cool. They know that I'm actually still listening when I'm sketching and that's just really fun. I look at that and I can remember things that, like when I look at that, I can remember what we were talking about while I was doing that. It's amazing. Then we had this amazing five course meal. Uh, first time I've sketched in a restaurant for many, 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 many months. And this book was definitely a um, hindrance. I was in a small area. This book was too big. So it took me two plates before I got the hang of it. So, um, you know, starting to get the, the hang of it here of how to capture the food really quickly and not let it go cold. More of this ugly building. A pair of embroidery scissors for my cross stitch. And then, you know, sometimes I intentionally do something silly, like this doesn't make any sense at all to paint across the spiral. This is a John Ruskin book, um, which actually I opened it randomly and it had some quote about quality versus quantity, which is actually what we've been talking about on the day, the Saturday before. Um, so, you know, some of my pages are just made up of little bits and pieces. Do they go together or not? I leave that for you to decide. 
but they're recording um, lots of little bits and pieces and then wow another big one one of these big sketches <laughs> and I'm like wow it's it's um, hard to see what I'm doing but enjoying it uh, now I'm getting into the foundations group run through so I when I go through one of my sketching now courses I do uh, weekly live streams and so this is preparation for that and working out what I'm going to do for the demo uh, back at Lankover again, this is actually the de demo, some colour mixing I did on the live stream. So sometimes I do that in a separate book and sometimes I do it in here. So it's just, just kind of really depends. This book is a little bit too big for a live stream. And then the day after a live stream, I often, <laughs> oh, a bit tired, um, exhausted. And so sometimes my pages like this, this I'm, I'm there at Lane Cove and I'm not really, um, not really, not really, what did I say? Post live stream heart, not really in it type of visit. But I still go and it's still fun to, to be in the bush to get my hand moving and um, just have fun. And also to play with composition as well. So even though I am sketching the same type of scene over and over again, I'm really thinking about uh, the composition and how I lay out the trees and the rocks and the bushes. Uh, and then this is a Two hour visit to Cockatoo Island, Zoom core initially, but this was ah oh, so nice to have this big book, especially for these big cranes. Oh, I'm just really loving the book. And then other pages, they're very open. There's not a lot of paint on this page at all. That's okay. So it, it, it once again, I'm, I'm thinking all the time about how can I create variety as I, I go from page to page. More color mixing. Another one of these continuous line drawings of the boring building uh, as part of the foundations course, another family outing. I managed to get this sketch done then and just added the sky later. Another play area, <laughs> another map to fill in a white space, more swatches. A Saturday at home doing a lot of tidying up and sorting. And so these are random objects that I, I came across or are lying around, things I found, things I threw out. And then the Banksia that I picked up the other day was on my desk and then all the seeds started falling out. That's the kind of story of my life. More continuous line. So this is like just what I do. This is just part of my life. Um, I'd like to get a little bit more variety in terms of objects, in terms of somehow finding visual ways of recording my day, um, what I work on, because um, that's also interesting for me. But at the moment, that's still mainly in the in the text. More double continuous line, which is that like this is really boring and not happening, so I stop and then I find a junction that I really like and so this is ah, part of this scene that I'm really interested to come back and experiment with more. The start of a new project which is to sketch my teapots. Another uh, visit to Lane Cove. This was um, before a live stream so I kind of knew that I wasn't going to be able to finish that page because the live stream was at night. So I then just did a quick line drawing and then this is the pattern of the pavement below me just as a way of filling in the spread so I didn't have to do anything more to it because I knew I wouldn't because I do have this habit of liking to start a new day on a, on a new page, on a new spread. Yeah, more of the same really. This is one I um, was filming at the same time. Bits and pieces, um, you know, I was sorting through my brushes another zoom call, another outing. So once again, descriptions of what I did on this particular outing are on my blog, links below, a sketch that was aborted due to rain. So I just left it and then I wanted to draw like little bits and pieces, experimented with painted lines. You know, sometimes they don't work and look, I really want to sketch more of these random things. So this does not go on the page, but hey, I don't, I don't really care about that. The memories are important. Playing with shapes this particular week for foundations. And then um, sketch during a Zoom call. Once again, the blind contour, some collage from my nieces. And then the last page is more play areas, my nephew wants me to sketch a robot and more color swatches. So this has been an amazing book to fill 
uh, fill up. I just um, have loved it so much. I've loved the bigger size. I've loved more room to write. And it is heavy to carry around, so I definitely would not use it um, just as a general, a de a, you know, generally it's too heavy. And besides, which it's actually a discontinued size, so they only do the kind of A4 size now, uh, which, uh, let me see, can have I got an A4 sheet? This is an A4 sheet, so that's the, the biggest book they, they currently have. So this is a one-off for me um, and um, just so much fun to use it. So I hope that you've enjoyed this walkthrough, uh, some of the ideas uh, of what I sketch, how I sketch, how I tie pages together. And um, I've decided that I enjoyed the spiral so much that I'm using a smaller sp spiral, which feels insanely small. <laughs> now. Uh, if you're interested, I can do a walkthrough of this book once I've finished. So if you've got any questions about my pages, uh, look on the blog links or leave questions below. And I, um, I hope that this has inspired you to get out and just sketch more and not worry about whether you're creating a masterpiece or not. Just to sketch, document your day, capture the moments and have fun.